Peter Jardim Fors. The prize is in uh, behavioral economics. Can you explain what it is? Behavioral economics means that you take into account human psychological factors, such as our limited rationality, our social concerns, we care about the well-being of others as well, and also our lack of self-control. These are the three main factors that are accounted for in, in behavioral economics. And what are the main, the major contributions from this year's prize laureate, Richard well, he, Taylor? He has worked in all three areas and made groundbreaking proposals uh, and also a lot of experiments in the areas that have shown the economic consequences of, of these uh, human factors, you can call them. Eh? So there are, there are his proposed theories in all three areas. Eh? So we are not homo economicus, as economists used to call the rational uh, homos. No, even, even though Richard Thaler is from Chicago, he doesn't belong to the Chicago school, who has been one of the main proponents for homo economicus. Um, but he has really wanted to show that humans, the, fact, the human factors really has an influence on economic decisions. The earlier models has thought of these shortcomings as being kind of random deviations and, uh, and uh, uh, not really, if, if you're irrational you will soon be thrown out of the market. But he's shown that this is not true. These, there are systematic deviations uh, in human behavior that needs to be explained that need to be explained, yes. So do you have any examples of those systematic uh, di diversions? Well, one is this model of, of mental accounting. I mean, we tend to keep our spendings in different boxes, so to speak. Uh, and uh, traditional economic theory says that it doesn't matter where you put your money, you should be able to move them between these boxes. But people don't. I mean, they have savings accounts for for vacation they have one account for buying a new car and so on and they don't want to spend money from one account to use in, in, in another to pay off your credit card debt for instance so that's one example mm -hmm. this is experimental science he has made done, by yeah he has also done lots of experiments in particular when it comes to our judgment of fairness there, there is together with the earlier laureate daniel kahneman he has done a, a series of experiments in all involving several games, uh, ultimatum game, the take their games so-called, that show that people really care about uh, the, uh, being fair uh, to others. As for example in uh, what areas? Uh, well, uh, in, in, in wage, wages for instance, that uh, people are not willing to be unfair in, in, in wages. They don't like when a company raises the price of a, of a product if uh, demand suddenly rises. They think that there is a fair price for a product and even if the, if the company could sell the, 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 the product at a higher price, they, they don't think they should. So it's not a fair price. That's another area. So you are more fair than economists thought about us? Uh, Traditional economics says that we all only think about our own self-interest. Of course, you can say that being fair, being just to you, is good for me in the long run. So some economists say that this can be modeled. But Thaler has shown that there are more concerns and it's more, it's more general than has been thought before. And he's provided experimental evidence for this. So. And his colleague that you mentioned, Daniel Kahneman, hmm? uh, is also a previous prize laureate. Yeah. Uh, they work together and he also wrote a book about thinking fast or slow. So yeah. what does Richard Taylor say about that? Well, fast or slow? Yeah, their, their relation is, is very interesting because Taylor worked with Kahneman in the early 1980s uh, and he was inspired by Kahneman and Tversky's prospect theory when he developed the theory of mental accounting for instance uh, or the theory of the endowment effect is another of his con contributions. Um, but then uh, he also developed this planner doer model the, the, that is used to explain how we are not so good at saving for our future uh, well-being and, and actually Daniel Kahneman has then later taken up this model so when he talks about thinking fast and, and thinking slow this is an example of such a planner and doer model I mean this is the the fast one is the one who lives in the present and the slow one is the one who lives for from the for the long perspective so one can say that Kahneman has been inspired by, by Thaler's mo models that there is a given and a take between these two prize winners but this thinking about people like uh, about delayed rewards 
it is not new. Is it new for economists? Uh, the psychological factors are not new. I mean, they are all, all well known. I mean, these bounded rationality, limited self-control and so on. They're well known psychological. What Thaler has done is to put this into an economic context and shown that it has large consequences for economic decisions uh, uh, and he has also been able to model uh, some of these uh, consequences so it's not the psychological factors as such but it's their impact on on economic uh, theory he also has coined a new term nudging can you explain it nudging means that that you want to help people to do something that they like themselves and that's very important. Thaler doesn't want to be paternalist. He doesn't want to impose uh, rules on, on people. He wants to be a, he wants to be a li libertarian paternalist. That means that you should always keep the freedom of the individual. But you can still devise certain mechanisms to help the people uh, plan better for their future. And his most uh, well-known examples of nudging are his pension saving programs, the Save More Tomorrow. Uh, why, why this? You could, you could ask yourself if nudging is also a kind of manipulation. That, that's, uh, there has been criticism against uh, his nudging, yeah? but the criticism has often missed this fact that a person can always opt out of the program if he or she wants to. It's not, there, you're not bound to it. You can always leave a pension saving program or you can always change your mind concerning being an organ donator or, or, or something like that. So it's, it's a libertarian program, and, and so it's, you're not imposing anything on, on persons in, in his nudging uh, mechanisms. Uh, so in what way would you say Richard Taylor has changed the economical science? Well, the short summary is that he's made economics more human. Eh? Well, what did he say when you called him this morning? He, he, had, he was slow to wake up, I must say. I think he was, <laughs> he was not prepared for it. Eh? Did, was he happy? He was happy, of course. Yes, yes, he was happy, but uh, he, he was quite taken by it, I, I, was my impression. Thank but, uh, you very much. Thank you.